Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for School of Motion. In a previous tutorial, Sarah Wade showed us several ways to work with 3D text in Adobe After Effects. But since that time, Adobe has added a new and much more flexible way to create and work with real 3D text. And in this video, I'll show you how to use it. So here I am in After Effects in a really simple 3D composition. I've got some basic 3D text if I rotate the camera around. You can see there's a flat layer that I'm using as a floor. This is basically your typical 2.5D project. Okay, but now I want to turn this into 3D extruded text. So to do that, the first thing I have to do is go into my composition settings and go to the composition settings right here and choose 3D renderer. And from there, there's a renderer listed and it's set to classic 3D by default. If I click on that and I choose Cinema 4D, I'm going to get a whole bunch of new features that were not available in the standard 3D renderer, such as extruded and beveled text shapes, reflections, curved layers, things like that. But I'm also going to lose a bunch of stuff like motion blur and uh, layer styles and track mats. So I just want you to be aware of that. You are definitely uh, losing some stuff in this process and you're going to have different reasons for wanting to do it this way. But for now, let's just focus on the 3D properties for this layer and work with that. Okay, so I'm gonna select my 3D text layer and I'm gonna twirl this down. Now, if you've worked with 3D text or 3D layers before, you probably are noticing that there's something new here called geometry options. These are not available to you when you're not using that Cinema 4D renderer. So I'm gonna twirl this down and inside, I'm gonna see now that I've got bevel depth, whole bevel depth and extrusion depth. Now, let's just uh, go, let's bring our extrusion depth up really high. And of course, this becomes very hard to see because we don't have any light here. So lights will help define the edges. So I'm just gonna go to layer, new and light. And I'm going to create a, let's go with a parallel light, directional light essentially. And I'm gonna set the intensity up to 100 and just click okay. And then I'm just gonna take this, bring it up slightly. So we start to see something that looks like that. And I wanna give a little more light there. So I'm gonna duplicate this parallel light here, control D. And then I'm just gonna drop that down like so. And then just to give a little more light overall so we can get some of these darker edges, we can see this stuff. I'll choose layer, new and light. And I'm gonna choose an ambient light and I'll set this to 30% and that will light things up. And we get some nice 3D text there, but it's pretty basic right now. So one thing I wanna do is add some reflections into the floor so we can see our text reflected in there. So I'm gonna select the floor layer here and I'll just roll this up. I'm gonna hit AA to reveal all of its 3D properties. And so we can go into the materials here and you can see that we've got reflection intensity. So I'll set that up to, why don't we set that up to 60. And of course the floor gets darker because it's reflecting the whole black uh, background, but we can now see the reflection of the text. Maybe that's too much, maybe 40. And then I'm also going to work with the reflection sharpness and set that to maybe 50%. So we get a bit of a blurry, fall off here on the reflection and then I can roll this off a little bit. So now we've got our 3D text and we've got the reflection. And one other thing I wanna do is add in some shadows. So what I'll do here is I can choose one of these two lights, let's say this one right here, and I'll go over to AA to reveal its properties. And I'm gonna set the lights properties for cast shadows to on and nothing happens yet. The next thing I need to do is select my text. Again, I'm gonna hit AA just to reveal its 3D properties. And I'm going to choose uh, cast shadows on. And now we can see that we've got some 3D shadows there. From here, I can look at some of the other properties which wouldn't have been apparent without all that lighting before. So I can choose the uh, bevel depth. I can bring this up high. Now you'll notice that no matter how big I make this, nothing seems to happen. And what I first need to do is choose a bevel style. So I can go with angular, which is the typical standard uh, bevel style. Right, let's just bring that up and you can see. Um, we'll get, you know, let's even get a little bit closer here. Um, we can also try instead of the bevel uh, of angular, we can try concave. We can try convex. I like concave, so I'm just gonna go with that in this case. And I'm also gonna sort of take the text and move it up slightly because now it's sticking through the floor now that we've added that bevel in. So we can bring this up a little bit. And now things start to get interesting. It's not apparent, and it took me a while to figure out exactly how to make this happen, but you can actually change the colors and different material properties of the different faces of this front right here, of the bevel side, of the sides, and then even the back if you want to. So let's take a look at how to do that. Twirl this closed uh, and twirl it back open. 
And you'll see that by text, we now have something called animate, which is, you know, you might think of it for the standard animation stuff that you've got in here, the different presets and the different animators. And if I quickly expand everything up, because I want you to be able to see the user interface, uh, I'm going to click on animate here. And you can see that we've got front, bevel, side, and back. And these give us the ability to change the color and different other properties of each of the faces of this 3D bevel text. So I'm gonna just work with front and color and I'm gonna set it to RGB. And from there, I'm just gonna change that to something like, I don't know, like an orange, get a deep orange there. It may look like yellow because the light's so intense. So I might go a little even deeper then and click okay. And yeah, so now we've got our text, we've got it lit and it's got this different color. And we could even do something like, for example, go here and for, to add a property. So in other words, not create a new animator with different properties. I'm going to add to this existing one. I can go to property and I can choose again front and I can try something like reflection intensity. And if I want to turn that all the way up, it's going to look super ugly, but we can see the floor reflected in the material. And so we can do that with each of these different faces and we can change different properties so you can create some really unique stuff. Something else I just forgot to mention and I want to look at here is by the uh, geometry options here, we've got, uh, we did bevel depth and we did uh, bevel style. What we didn't cover was uh, the whole bevel depth and right now it's set to 100%. But if I set this down to zero, what we'll see is that the holes in the text, they get cleared up. We don't give it the bevel there. And that's just in case some of the holes close up and you wanna keep it open so you can read it more. Um, you don't have to go all the way. I went all the way down to zero. Maybe if you set it to, let's say 25%, that gives you some bevel, but not the full depth that closed it up. So again, back to 100, and you can see that the, the D here is completely closed. Okay, now in this composition, I wanna take this text and I wanna have it sort of bulging out towards the camera on a curve, on a, on a circular path. And to do that, we have to add in first circular path. So let me just select the word universal right here, and I'm gonna double click and add in a path. Now, if we rotate the camera, and by the way, I'm gonna switch over to draft 3D just so it's easier to navigate this. If we rotate the 3D camera here, I can see that it's kind of going around it like this. I kind of want it to actually be more like something that's circled like this with the, you know, like the universal pushing out on it. So what I'm gonna do is this. Uh, first of all, I wanna make it a circle, at least more circular than maybe an exact circle, but I wanna just get that a little more circular like that. And then I wanna select the text right here and choose for path right here. Just in case you don't see it, you twirl, you know, twirl your stuff down, go to path. And for path, set it to mask one. And again, that path options are under text. And what's happening here is that it's kind of hanging out at the bottom, kind of like a smile. So let me just turn off the floor for a moment so we can just see what's going on here. So you can see that that it's on this path, but the path is now facing the wrong direction. And like I said before, and I want it to do more like this. So if I rotate this 90 degrees, well, now the path is doing what it's supposed to do, but the text is not facing the camera. So what we have to do is select the text here and right here, I'm going to choose animate and I'm gonna add in a property of rotation and I'm just gonna set the X rotation and I'll set that to 90 degrees. And now we've got this universal text kind of bulging out, sort of like you would expect to see in a movie. And now let me bring the floor back and we just close this all up, bring the floor back and we just get this positioned and we'll just turn off draft 3D. And so, yeah, this is how you add text to a path in 3D. The last thing I wanna mention is that the 3D extruded text works with the text animators that come with After Effects. So, you know, you could twirl this down and you could try adding different animators like that, or you can go over to the effects and presets area right here and under animation presets, we can go into the text section right here. And I'm just gonna find a 3D resolve position and I'm just gonna drop that onto the layer. And well, you know, one thing it does, it kind of scrambles the positions of the text. I, I don't love the, that it's also sort of playing with the opacity of that. So if I go and twirl down the animator here that we've just added, you can see that one of the properties that's being animated here is the opacity. So I'm just gonna set this back up to 100 and we'll leave it at that. And now if we ran preview, and it's gonna take a moment, this is what you'll see. And this is what you get. And I think it's worth taking a dive into some of these and seeing how they work and also learning uh, text animators. If you haven't played around with these already, they're really great and powerful and can save a lot of time once you understand how to use them. Hey, before I sign off, I wanna mention that if you like learning, and obviously you do because you're watching this, 
but maybe you feel like you need a more structured environment, then check out School of Motion. Aside from top-level video training content that really shows you the ropes, there's a whole other level of awesomeness in that you'll get regular feedback on your work from a real human professional motion designer. Not only that, you'll also be connected with other artists through School of Motion's community where you'll be helping each other get better at your craft. Learn more about it all at schoolofmotion.com. As always, I hope that this helps you in your work. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for School of Motion. Thanks for watching.